Jean Steeler Colts are one of the coolest and most unique armies to Warhammer 40k. I absolutely love their lore, there's so much to dig into, and they just fit so perfectly in the overall uh, scheme of, of, of the world. They have traditionally had a ton of crazy tricks that yeah. match that lore, um, and they've been a lot of fun ever since they, they've come out. Uh, with 9th, 9th edition changing fundamentally the, the way that the game works, Gene Stiller is, the Gene Stillers are going to have to adapt. Um, but it's not all bad. There's lots of things that they can adjust to. Uh, new tactics. Um, Absolutely. Definitely it's a situation of up is down, down is up. Yeah. So we're excited to uh, look, look through that and uh, discuss all the things that we've learned about in our own playtests. So let's take a look. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is a crazy army with a ton of tricks. Yes, um, of course. There are definitely things that did take a hit. I'm going to be real about that. There's definitely things that they're not they're not happy about. But then there's a lot, a lot of other things that really didn't get used. There were units that I'm excited to put on the table. Um, yeah. That's going to be absolutely changed in uh, the at, new edition. At the very end of 8th edition, this army was already in a very tough spot. A lot yeah, of their best things... It really was had been um, really kind of nerfed down with points and changes, mm -hmm. and their Psychic Awakening didn't really no. level them up the way it did a lot of other factions. Exactly. So the end of 8th edition, this army wasn't playing that strong. No. At the start of 9th edition, a lot of those same units that were before very popular in many ways got worse. Yep, yep. But <laughs> so many other things that no one ever saw all of a sudden became super interesting and might actually even be downright good. Um, it's very true. And so yeah. that's when you're saying this down is up, up is down. It's like everything that was great before is <laughs> kind of buried uh -huh. and you're going to use very sparingly. And everything that was like, you, you don't even own it yet because right. it was that bad. <laughs> they're kind of pretty great now. I think it's 100% true. There's several things that I've kind of just dusted off from, from my uh, yeah. from the cupboard that might have been like converted to something else. Now they're back to what they originally were. Um, and honestly... When, when a lot of the changes first came out, um, they look on paper like it's all bad for Gene Stiller Cult. I'll be honest, that's sure. totally what it is. Yeah. But the more I dug into it, the more I started thinking about it, playing it, and um, and it's only sort of been confirmed yeah. with the new points changes, is there are ways of making this army really work, and it's just different. So why don't we dive into some of the yeah. positives that make this army work better in 9th edition? So 9th edition is a game not about killing, but about board control. That's right. And almost nobody does that better than these guys. They might do it in a weird way, but they are fundamentally an army that is about board control. That's right. They're about targeted strikes, peering up in, in certain locations, grabbing objectives from uh, lots enemies. Lots of bodies. Tons of bodies. Yeah, lots of obsec. They have lots of different tools, but ultimately they're all about board control. So yes. they are super happy with this general uh, setting for 9th edition. Yeah, absolutely. They're going to be able to play the board. And actually, in many, many new ways of playing the board are actually going to be more durable, tougher than they were before. Right. So we'll get to that a little later, but there's a lot of interesting stuff there. Totally. So uh, turn one traditionally is a very strange and quiet turn for Gene Stiller Cult right. players. You almost always hide everything. You almost generally don't pop up or do yeah. anything at all. You're just trying to not do something. This actually really was unfortunate uh, in, in ITC or even the, the book missions that had first strike in them because yeah. you really couldn't you miss get out a on kill. those points. Yeah, the Gene you Stiller Cult. up on it. This isn't, this has always traditionally been a, a, a planned generations and one turn in the making. <laughs> you know, it would take until almost turn two. There. That's right. It would take until turn two for this army to start going <laughs> off or even later. Right. Now the fact you could just stay off the board for as long as you need to. Yeah. You don't need to score those kills. No. Um, that gives you a ton more flexibility. It even means late game. Like you can afford to just go play your own game where you're playing the mission. You're kind exactly. of ignoring what they're doing. Right. And they're actually great at doing that. And they've never been able to play that way before. No. The mission allows them to do that. One of the reasons it modifies them a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Things like forcing them to come in by the third turn, uh, some of the FAQs that have, hit, that have hit them harder in the past, become less harsh by the removal, removal of the first turn kill, by the removal of subsequent kills, um, and a shorter game, shorter board, all these things are kind of perfectly set up to allow the army to pop up, do their thing, grab objectives, and, and just say, well, it's too late and now, everything right? Everything that, that was good about this army was about ways to um, get a really powerful charge off and mm -hmm. kill your opponent's big stuff. That's right. And that was the only way to play this faction yeah. <laughs> because that was the only way to play those missions. Yeah. Now that you don't have to kill the whole, you don't even have to make a charge ever. No. In an entire game. That's right. And you could get maximum points. You could get 100 out of 100 points without charging ever in 9th edition. I Right. It's totally doable. 100%. And, and so that means that all those tactics you had to win, yeah. used to win the game, they don't have to work anymore. And so those, those units that got worse 
were the units that did that, but you don't have to do mm, that anymore. No. So it's really not that big of a it's loss. all different, all yeah. different. So one of the things that I'm really excited about is something that I've been hoping for for a while, is the ability to have things like my uh, Achilles Ridge Runners not suffer uh, penalties oh, yeah. for moving and shooting, right? We don't get the chapter tactics, the cult creeds, um, so even if they were um, of that faction, Rusty they wouldn't claw, get, yeah, get they it wouldn't before. Get it. Exactly. Claw, yeah. the, 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 there's so many great vehicles in this faction that had pretty respectable output, yeah. but they already had Ballistic Skill 4, and they would suffer that move and shoot penalty. Yeah. And especially, it's not just all their vehicles, it's all the guard vehicles that they could take as well. Mm -hmm. Those allies. They, it's one of the, the largest collection of vehicles that benefit from move and shoot, yeah. right? Exactly. Um, almost, I can't, like, only other than this is guard. And they even have more <laughs> than guard, guard because they have guard plus. <laughs> this is a huge swath of vehicles that want to be able to move and shoot, mm -hmm. and even shoot in combat, these are both big wins for them. Exactly, and the shoot in combat is something that before didn't, it wouldn't have mattered, right? If, yeah. if we were able to shoot in combat, but we were still 8th edition, who cares, doesn't matter. But because the game is about board control, things like, again, Ridge Runners, like Chimeras, like uh, the um, Goliaths, Goliaths yeah. they can screen, they can get tagged, they are happy to shoot in combat because their job is already done, right? They're just gonna sit there, exactly. block things, have some acolytes or some uh, brood brothers inside. So these are all good things. Um, and of course, this kind of leads up to this idea that transports are really saucy for GCO yeah, cults. Every, if you've watched a lot of our tactics videos, we've almost recommended every faction's yeah, transport, sure. but some armies have better transports mm -hmm. than others, and this is definitely one that does. Not only do they have one of the best transports in the game, which is the Chimera, yeah. um, just very points effective, good at shooting, good durability, but they also have the Goliath, and the Goliath yeah. is it really, it's it's probably not quite as good as the Chimera, mm -hmm. but it holds more valuable models, That's right. which is more interesting, and it's a wicked cool model. They're so, so cool. in balance, that kind of puts <laughs> it over the top for me. Yeah, and, and, and in building lists, they've actually fulfilled an interesting role where you know you can say, uh, I'm gonna make them a bit tougher, take those heavy support detachments, which is yeah. important for list building, um, get those mining lasers, or you let them carry more models, Aberrants don't take up any additional slots, unlike a lot of things that are similar to them. So these transports become interesting. And even acolytes in there. Oh, you yeah. can have some real scary, like a couple brood totally. brothers in here, not so scary. Right. Good for grabbing a point. <laughs> but a squad of acolytes with some saws in there, now you gotta watch out. So the rise of, of uh, multiple small units is actually really exciting. We already started to see a trend towards these smaller acolyte units with saws. Uh, these transports yeah. let you do exactly that, right? Exactly. Uh, you would often take like 15 acolytes with saws. They were largely a transport for those saws. Well, let's just take 10 of them with, you know, yeah. a couple saws in there. So anyways, transports, very, very exciting for Gene Steeler Colts. Um, can't wait for that. Uh, the other thing, if you've watched any of our uh, battle reports so far, um, we found that often the player that, that goes up in the early game really needs to watch their back because there's so many points that can be scored in the second half in the yeah. last part of the game. You can really feel like you're way up on points, but someone could sneak in and sweep the game from out of from under you. Yep. Actually, a lot of our games have gone this way. <laughs> That's right. And there's a couple reasons why this army is good at that. Uh, not only did this army used to, first of all, the shorter game, the five turn game really That's helps them. Yep. Because this army was a bit of a glass cannon. Yeah. They would lose their models and not be able to play the game, end of the game. That lose, loss of turn six means that they're more effective longer. Additionally, they have the ability to hold units in reserve longer and have some key units to strike with, to grab objectives with. Right. And they could come right down onto objectives when needed, things like that. And I think that's really crucial for this faction to be able to play the primary mm -hmm. in any fit, any turn of the game that they'd right. like to. Yeah, 100%. Uh, so one of the secondary categories that is always worth considering when you're looking at your army is the psychic category, right? Sure. Um, you have the ability to perform psychic rituals, to do some mental interrogations, very genius still culty, right? That's, that's true. Um, and um, one of the things that you, you can't do when you, when you perform these rituals is uh, you can't really be fighting, you can't really do supporting actions, things like that. But Gene Stiller Cult has some, some, uh, a few really great psychers that are happy to be kind of buried behind lots of different bodies in the corner, yeah. hiding um, and casting these things. That's um, true. And, and also denying them too, let's be real. Like when, when someone is taking that ritual, uh, your ability to, to deny that is very, very important. Actually, in general, not only are they good at these psychic secondaries, but there's there really isn't a secondary category mm -hmm. that this army isn't one of the best position to pick up if yeah. you need uh some infantry to do some actions if you need some infantry to pop up in the back of an uh, opponent's board yep. if you need to be able to take down their characters this army can do all of those things and yep. it has the tools to do them very easily yeah. this army is going to be able to play the primary and secondary mission and that's always a good sign for, for an army that's it's really exciting even even like weird things like the teleport homer that's actually that's right. really hard to play gene still a cult they can actually do it yeah um so something that's 
uh, really, really exciting for the offensive side of uh, Gene Steel Colts is the changes to engagement range, right? Um, so this uh, largely, when we talk about it, we talk about it in terms of being able to fight five inches vertically, which sure. is, um, it's it's not the biggest deal here. The big deal is the short charges, right? I can't mm. tell you how many times I'm like sweating bullets and as I'm rolling my, my ambush and rolling my charge, hoping that I can actually reach. Um, but now the fact that people can't really hide up uh, up in buildings and make those charges longer, um, that's actually a really nice thing for when you do need to push out because yeah. that will happen still part of the when army. When this army chooses to charge, it needs to be able to make that charge and yep. um, it makes it easier for you to make that charge and people not to be able to hide away from you or screen you out on that ground floor is easy. That's right. So it's good. We'll talk about the negative implications of engagement range in the, the next section. But also another big thing is the changes to morale. This is mm -hmm. an army that had biggish units yeah. with they have some abilities to ignore morale, but by and large, a lot of their squads were going to suffer from it. Well, another thing, too, yeah. is um, now, again, you can only have one Patriarch per detachment, which makes right. you fearless. And uh, traditionally, you'd run almost like two or three. That's right. So you'd have these little bubbles of fearless, and you can't really do that anymore, right? Yeah, exactly. So in this case, you're going to be taking morale che checks more often, but morale mm -hmm. is less punishing, yeah. which is crucial because you're going to lose a lot of models, and if they have elite weapons, they actually start to add up in points. You really can't really does. afford to lose them. Absolutely. Um, so the last positive we want to talk about is, of course, the changes to Overwatch. Yeah. Very exciting. Gene Steelers do have um, several ways of turning off Overwatch. That's true. Um, but well, some of the best, actually. They have some of the best. But two things. One, uh, you now have to deselect everything before before the game. So if you're going to take um, the amulet, if you're going to take the spell to turn off um, Overwatch, I still would take it because massive notes massive is, is amazing. Massive notes is great. Yeah. But um, these tools are kind of harder to get, right? Um, and so with Overwatch just going away. That's you great. can make more charges more often. Exactly. It's, it's a great thing. Your opponent has to use CP. It's all good, right? Even right. if they can still overwatch a bit, it's great. But, okay, those are the positives, and there are definitely some there. Sure. By and large, the way you used to play this army, though, has seen some negatives. Yeah. So why don't we go through some of the things that actually got worse with this faction, because there are quite a few to go through. There really are. So the number one uh, negative, I would say, for the army is the changes to line of sight. Of course. Um, this army thrived in, in the ITC format, and particularly, on its ability to get inside of a ruin, just stuff right into the corner, and stay completely hidden yeah. until it was time to make a charge. That's right? right. They would attempt to charge through this ruin. If they made the charge, great. They would also ignore your overwatch this way. Right. But yep. then, additionally, if they didn't make the charge, they were hiding out of line of sight from shooting. Mm -hmm. And if you came in to fight them, they'd still wreck you. So exactly. um, this was an amazing tactic. It was at the heart of their playstyle. whether right. this was with aberrants, acolytes, pure strains, characters. Everyone used this tactic. This <laughs> tactic does not exist. Hurts a you lot. can shoot into these buildings as soon as you're into them. And so this army cannot just hide and bide its time in these buildings. It's got to play very differently. 100%. Um, so one of the other things that uh, is sort of the things that you, the thing that gets highlighted the most when you first look at ninth edition, you say, well, I need to score my primary objectives by grabbing an objective and holding until my next turn. Yeah. Um, other than maybe aberrants, if you are a very lucky person, unlike me, there's not really anything I can think of that I actually want to put onto a point and actually have faith in surviving. Right? Yeah. You're going to have to double up on these points. And actually, in many cases, both of these problems, the yeah. fact that you can be shot yep. and the fact that you score at top of round, yep. this is why we're teching into transports. 100%. Because this is the way you hold the point. That's right. You've got the transport on, then they got to get big guns to break it out, and then when you've got that, a unit drops out, and now you got that unit as well. And if you do that a couple times over, right. now, we're, now you're holding a point here. Lots of small um, units, yeah. transports. They can't kill us all, right? That's, that's the idea. That's the idea, right. <laughs> and you even things like jackals, things that are, are mm -hmm. fairly durable, yeah. you, even just one squad, you can't just pop there and hope to get it. You're going to no. have to put multiple squads, multiple threats, make it so that they're just never going to get them all. Backups on backups are super important. Yeah. So the next couple of points, kind of want to talk about once because they're both, they're both equally important and, and very related. Uh, try pointing, right? The process yeah. of basically surrounding a model with at least three models so that they could not fall back was extremely important to Gene Stiller Colts. They were very well equipped to do this. Yeah, um, It was kind of like your trump card, oh your like game-winning yeah. move. This thing where you would come down with your aberrants, kill something or wrap something, and then be right in the heart of their army and win. That was the play style. Yeah. Um, that play style was going out of the window for many reasons. Exactly. But without try pointing, it's like... There's many nails in that coffin. <laughs> Whenever we play, we're playing Warhammer, but we're also playing the tri-pointing game in, our, right. in our previous matches. So that obviously has gone away. And on a rel related note, the other thing that they would love to do is tag a vehicle. Just touch into it, stop it from shooting. Um, and James Dillacolts suffered doubly for this because one, 
Um, obviously, it doesn't do anything. But two, unlike some other factions, they can't really survive the the even the, average to low onslaught yeah. of any tank uh, when it shoots back into them, right? That's right. You're not really wasting much of your opponent's fire when you have five acolytes, and ten brood brothers. Traditionally, this army didn't do well against uh, vehicles. Um, yeah. in, it, it really struggled with them. You had to use your specific hammers, and if that didn't work, then... That's you know. correct. And so, obviously, now that we're teching into vehicles a little more, and we're going to go over that a little more, you might have more tools to take on vehicles, yeah. and this tagging could be replaced by just blowing them up. 100%. 100%. <laughs> Um, so coherency changes are something that everyone's adjusting to. Yeah. Um, that is very important for a lot of these movement shenanigans that we've been talking about, yes. you know, stringing out units, things like this. As we mentioned, um, the sort of the rise of these multiple small units might make this less of an issue because I think you're going to be wanting to run smaller squads anyways. But you're still looking at ten, you know, ten man Brood Brother squads. Um, yeah, it's you know, still harder. Bike squads. And we know hurts. even from playing, it's actually just it's mentally taxing to stay in range. <laughs> and you might accidentally right. find like, oh, move, move, move. Moved all these people. Oh, wait, this is out of an yeah. engagement. I lose half the squad. It's, and it's, uh, it sucks. Um, I'm not looking so you're going to that. You're gonna have to get used to that one. It's kind of big. Mm -hmm. um, so we also talked about how engagement range has a positive yeah. with vertical, <laughs> but it has a large negative with that you have to be within, if you want to fight in two ranks or more, mm -hmm. you have to be within half inch yep. of a model that's within half inch. Right. This means your front rank has to get closer than before. Mm -hmm. That's already painful. Yep. Your second rank has to be with half inch. That means you're never getting a third rank. No. Right? And even getting that second rank mm -hmm. means you had to make a better than average charge most of the time because your pylons aren't getting you that much closer. Exactly. This is a huge hit to combat armies it in really general. Is and to armies with big fighting squads. 100%, especially units that, that kind of rely on these mass bodies. Um, like we said, the rock saws are obviously amazing, but a, a lot of it is coming from those rending claws, right? Which is just mass attacks from mass right. bodies that if you can't get as many as you as you need and can't really throttle that, that hurts a lot. Um, so that's, that is sort of the, the reality of engagement range. There's some good for it. There's definitely going to be some bad that we have to I, deal with. A couple things that we've been pointing out, like before, as we've said before, this army used to go into your oppo opponent's deployment zone, yep. fight them on their own terms, right. and, go, and go after them. Now we're talking about this mid-board army, though. Mm -hmm. Those charge ranges should be less contentious, right? Like you're coming yes. out of hiding, making your charges. So while we're talking about in many ways these charges got harder, the charges are different now, I think. This mm -hmm. is, you know, every, we're all always talking about counterpunch. Like, this is on the point. Right. They come out and fight this. Now you come out of hiding and take them. It's it, The charges get less difficult. I think that's absolutely true, and especially thinking about units like Acolytes, right? In Psychic Awakening, we got the ability to actually advance and charge with them. Yeah. So uh, before you'd say, well, usually I'm going to cult ambush. It might be useful later game, but I think yeah. very consistently now you could say, I'm going to have, you know, 14 Acolytes or whatever behind the building that's away from the objective. Once the opponent comes in, you can run them out. Advance and charge, it doesn't require psychic stimulus, which also always makes me a bit nervous um, to get those more reliable that's charges. Right. That's not like, hopefully I get a good ambush roll, right? Yeah. Um, so all that is is, is definitely changed. Um, characters um, are going to have to play very carefully now. Yes. Right? That's another thing. This is a very character-rich army. Yeah, um, we've got an entire line of characters, <laughs> and that's just like what you would have in a normal game. Oh, 100%. That's not a whole collection of characters. That's just one 2,000 oh point gosh. game with the characters. This army was extremely character heavy, probably yeah. the most character heavy I would say so. in most builds. Because you need most of them. Yeah, and not only are you not getting the HQ slots yeah. to put all these characters in, yep. but you're you're not able to keep them safe as easily. <laughs> and they used to be able to be a lot more independent. Mm -hmm. Now it's a lot easier to blast through that screen and pop those. They're super easy to kill characters. They're so, so if fragile. they're ever in the open, they're yeah. gone. Yeah, absolutely. Things like the Sanctus, obviously, and the Keller Morph. Um, definitely wanted to p p uh, pop up somewhere, be cheeky. Um, again, that second or third patriarch, you won't really have anymore. Um, but if you choose to take a second one, generally that's the role they play. They can't really do that as well anymore. Um, so I think, luckily, we do have um, unquestioning loyalty. So we'll be leaning more into that to yeah. have these bodies that you can actually use to counteract. Um, so, you know, silver lining, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, you've still got something, but you still need to be next people to use that. So Absolutely. It's, uh, it's still pretty pretty tricky. Okay, so... One of the things that hit any army with big units is the blast weapons. Yep. There's not that many armies that get hurt by blast weapons. No. This is one of them. It really is. And uh, this is another reason why you're going to want to keep your squad small. Yeah, it really is. This yeah. is something I've still been trying to come to terms with myself because I did really think 14... 14-man, 15-man squads with just a few saws was, was the way to go, but suddenly you're either taking way more hits yeah. or you have less cushion for things like your rock saws, right? And that's a that's a rock and a hard place decision right there, right? It's a rock saw and a hard place. And I <laughs> oh. think absolutely when you've got, when you're thinking about a 15-man squad and you're just, you should cut it down to 10. 
Like once you get to 11 plus and you unload yeah. full blast on it's yourself. not worth it. No, 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 no. Like you don't want wyverns like this getting 24 shots <laughs> on your juicy well, little no. 15 man squad. They won't survive it. Unlike some things like here. Plague Bearers, they, these guys just can't take it. I'm right, sorry. like maybe, yeah, Plague Bearers, Necron Warriors or something. Some things can actually They're take the extra the hits. They yeah. can take the extra hits. No, not these guys. Paper thin. So Paper thin. Uh, take your smaller squads. It's going to be a big one. <laughs> So we know this was a very exhaustive list, both positive and negative, but we really can't emphasize enough, this is still an extremely cerebral army. You're gonna have to adjust and adapt and be a true Gene Steeler cult player. That's right. Um, you can absolutely make them work. So with ha that having been said, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some uh, strategies and tactics. Let's take a look. Okay, so let's take a look at a scenario that we've been talking about several times in uh, looking at the uh, changes and um, how that would actually work on the table. Um, so here we have an objective. We have some sort of deployment zone, about 12 away. We have some uh, nasty, nasty salamanders. That's right. <laughs> Solid intercessors. Exactly. Um, they, they've they now taken the point um, from just this rock grinder. Of course, we're going to be doing things like blocking out. Yeah, so basically, um, as we we're saying, we're, we're using your transports to come and grab these objectives, exactly. right? Exactly. So you flew all the way up here. You put your transport up on it. But now the Space Marines come with their nasty obsec. Exactly. And they've taken it from you. Right. So this is a common thing that's going to happen. We're going to be trading objectives. But in this case, you're not just trading for objectives. You want to trade for units. You're trading for units, and you're also you're trading for denial, right? So in this case, he's going to be holding the objective. He's, he's turned off the fact that at the start of my turn, I don't hold this objective. But now it becomes equally as important that I Stop be mean him. to him and turn off those points, right? There's a that's lot right. of this trading that happens during the games. Um, so what we have here is we have a unit of, again, 10 Acolytes. We have, we've maxed out on the two saws that you can take in a 10-man. We have the Colt Icon. We have our uh, Tasty Magus right behind. Um, we note that this unit, of course, has to be much farther back than it used to uh, used to be, right? That's right. Um, this ruin is 12 away, pretty standard deployment. Um, and traditionally, I'd want to be right up onto this so I'd actually have another like three inches of movement, right? Um, but we've stayed behind, so we're completely obscured. Um, yep. And what we're going to do is we're, of course, just going to shift over our... Um, our transport right here, so that's it's right. still on the point, maybe blocking for something else. This is a decision sure. that's context dependent. And what we're going to do is we're going to take these um, acolytes, we're going to advance them. So we're looking at, on average, about a nine moving sure. forwards. Um, so that's going to take them to about a six inch charge, right? Because we talked about 12 to here, two or three past here. Yep. Um, so suddenly we're in very reasonable charge range. And then we'll be able to char get the charge. Get in there, do what we need to do. Maybe we have and some of course this beyond. is making use of uh, either the new stratagem that came out of Psychic Awakening, or of course the uh, the Psychic Power. Yeah, so the reason we have the Magus here is because you could be also using the Psychic Power. Um, it's really nice to have this redundancy. Yeah, if um, you fail, this, you could try the Psychic. If you fail, use the strategy. Exactly. Luckily, the Acolytes are already the units that we're looking at using, right? Yeah. Now, nothing, another, another thing to consider is um, shooting out of line of sight is in fact a thing, right? Yeah. So this is a really, really fragile unit. Um, and so this and is a, a very valuable one. And very valuable, right? Yeah. Um, so this is where the transports also come into the, uh, their own. Um, like we said, they're great for blocking on objectives. They're also great for protecting these countercharge units, right? And so, giving extra movement. And giving extra movement, exactly. So we have this rock grinder back, back here. Again, he's outside of the obscure, obscured um, range. If there's not enough much yeah. tank killing, we could definitely push up and say, just try to shoot me. You're not likely to do yeah. it. And now what we do, what we have is an additional three inch uh, movement, right? We have yeah. three inches to disembark. So now we're right back up to the uh, the edge of the ruin, just like we uh, like we used to be. We're again going to be moving nine inches away. So it's an even shorter charge. It's like a three inch charge that's at this right. point. That's right. And so, the th okay, what we're showing you here, the main thing that's new, right? Before when you used to assault, you used to be assaulting via deep strike. Right. Into their deployment zone or somewhere yeah. deep into a critical area. Now what we're talking about is striking at the middle of the board mm -hmm. from deep within your deployment zone. And deep because you need to be behind line of sight blocking. And you can't be in the ruins yep. in order to be blocked. So you need to be behind the ruins. And if you're going to be behind, you need that extra movement. That's so right. being inside your transport behind the ruin is one clever way to get extra movement. Mm -hmm. may all, sometimes almost make up exactly the distance oh, that totally. you would have been missing. And it gives you that flexibility. And that's what you're going to do. You're, you're rarely going to be deep striking with units like this. You're going to start in your deployment zone, wait, and then come in and trade and counter charge. This is how you're going to be taking the board, and this is how you're going to be trading up for units 
which is a crucial way to play the gene steroid call. It's all about trading up. Um, and one other small note about this technique, because we do think it is extremely powerful, is you could actually look at running um, the cult that actually gives you plus two to your advances. This was something right. that was always useful, but because the primary method of delivery was cult ambush, it often didn't get, get uh, used very often or was used very situationally, right? Yeah. Um, nowadays, it's actually definitely worth considering because this is a tactic that we see using in almost every single yeah, game. Yeah, the board is smaller. Yeah. Your ability to move across it and get into combat is, is better than it used to be. Exactly. So this is great. Now, of course, in this particular example, Nothing is stopping this unit from getting wiped. Nope. So you probably still want to bring up other <laughs> things to hold the point. Yep. But this unit now can, maybe you could advance other units that could get on the point. Mm -hmm. This unit could advance and charge though. And that's crucial because we need to wipe these space marines. Absolutely. Yeah, and you use, you know, you use that charge as much as, you po as possible. You get the movement. You kind of push out here as much as you can, and then you keep getting more bodies on there. Again, it's all about multiple small units. Think about the overall context of the game. Um, that's what we're looking for here. That's great. Let's take a look at another example. Sounds good. Uh, in our next example, we'd like to ta talk about two very important things, taking and holding points. That's right. In ninth edition, it's all about the primary objective yep. and your ability to hold the board. Now, the Gene Steer Cults don't have the most durable units, no. but they do have a lot of tricks. And I think some of these tricks you're going to use very frequently and maybe differently than you might have used them mm -hmm. in eighth edition. And one of the main reasons here is because you score top of turn, Right. this modifies the way you could use some of your abilities that you used to use before. It really did. So we, we had abilities like uh, Perfect Ambush um, and uh, popping up within three inches. I'm totally blanking on the name, but you know it. Um, these things were useful before they were the main mechanisms to, uh, to actually get up on the board, That's right. hit, hit hard, do damage. They're still great. They're still going to be mainstays of your army, but the way that they're, that they're used and when they're used is different. Uh, so what we have here is we have a couple examples that we want to walk you guys through. Uh, first, we're going to talk about actually just taking uh, an objective, right? Yeah. So what we have here is an objective. We have uh, five uh, more intercessors, of course. Um, on the objective, uh, in this case, they've just gotten onto the objective, which actually happens a lot in a lot of the boards that we've been playing. Um, doubly so if you have a lot of threat, right? We have melee threat that is ready to go, go forward. So you're going to see people responding to your melee threats by hanging back just onto the objective, Especially right? Especially because this army can advance and charge and things like that. It's a so, huge threat range. Okay, so they're up on, on this objective. Now, yep. what you're going to find in a lot of games, the difference in winning or losing yep. late game is their ability to pick up those primary it points. It really is. Now, for all we know, this, their ability to hold this objective until next turn yep. is the difference in five or ten points that are going to win them the game, That's right. and we just don't have, a lot of times, the range to get to them, nope. and we might have no combat threats in range. Now, we have we have this Goliath, but they're obsec, nothing we can do to Doesn't take matter. it from them. Yep. So in this case, we're going to use our perfect ambush ability. That's right, or lying in wait. The oh, lying in wait, Popping Sorry. up within yeah. three. So we will, we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, so this lets us pop up within three. Um, we cannot charge. Uh, we can shoot, which is sort of incidental. Um, the important part is we are getting as many obsec bodies as we possibly can within three inches. And unless they're very vigilant about making sure they're completely cover objectives from all angles, yeah. you can look for these these opportunities to pop up and steal it away. And this is this is actually a big yeah. swing in the game when you're when you're talking about you need to get some points for holding one, holding two, or holding more. Turning that off is actually a really big deal, um, especially because now they yeah. have to wait to another turn and they have to survive that turn to make up these points that you have now denied for a couple of commands. Well, this could have already been this could in the last turn of the game for all they know. Which and is again, it important. doesn't really matter if they drop like they're going to kill your unit. It's kind of irrelevant. You've stopped them from picking up that point that yep. they would have picked up, and it's a tool that you have to just come up right on an objective, which can be uh, it could just straight be game winning. Yep. You don't have to charge. You don't have to shoot. Again, you don't have to kill to win the game, That's exactly you just have right. to grab objectives or deny them. In this case, this tool, lying in wait, can be used to steal objectives away in a way that it couldn't have been before because of the scoring at top it of just, It just didn't do enough before. You'd say, cool, I'm gonna lie in wait, but I'm using that to use my flamer bomb or yeah. to do this thing to get in position. It was always about, okay, I can get in position, but I also have to be able to do the thing I need to do, which is mostly killing. That doesn't matter anymore, yeah. right? So just popping up, these movement abilities are so important. So let's show how you hold your own objective. In this case, we have an objective mm -hmm. back here. We've got 10 brood brothers in it. They're all you just kind it. of touching this ruin and they're on the objective. Now, traditionally, this unit is paper thin. There's <laughs> yeah, anything are. in the game can blast them off this objective, mm -hmm. and you need to hold it now until your next turn. It's not enough for those five or 10 Brood Brothers to be on it. Right. You need to hold it. This unit cannot hold it till next turn, nope. except 
if you use the right strategy. That's right. We're talking about the lurking stratagem. And this means that as long as a unit is on a piece of terrain, um, which they are here, uh, that unit is now untargetable as long as, uh, unless they are the closest visible unit. Uh, and of course, this is great for a lot of back objectives, side objectives. It basically brings back the character, tar the old character targeting rule uh, for a random infantry unit that you have. That's right. And again, we really like this idea of MSU. Uh, this, these things could absolutely be happening at the same time where you have these guys pushing back on the, on the, the far end of the board, and that completely blocks all of that shooting from going into these guys over here, right? So there's a lot of flexibility to, to, to do. It does cost two command points, but again, the primary missions, they cap out at, at 45 points, so as soon as you've got your points, you don't um, care. You, don't care. You, know, right. you'll, you can kill them off of theirs to deny them, and you don't care about yours because you're done, right? You might only need to use, you don't need to use the strat every turn in the no. game. You need to use it three times in exactly. the game. Still six CP, but if those, if those six CP guarantee you helping to mm -hmm. get that 45 primary. That's right. Who cares? That's what the CP is for. Yep. Um, and so what you've seen, both of these were expensive stratagems. Yeah. And you would deploy them at a key moment when it would swing the points in a meaningful way. Mm -hmm. Swinging the primary in this kind of way could be a huge game-winning move. And it's something that a lot of armies, other armies do not have. Yeah. It's a really unique capability of this faction. These are the kind of tools that you've become used to using, and we're here to encourage you that they are going to be as powerful as ever, but you need to use them in new and ultimately, I think it's exciting ways for me as a tactical yeah, player. It's, it's entirely new value. Before yeah. you used to keep a unit a, uh, from was, getting shot. It, this was aberrant most yeah, of the time, Yeah, you would right? stop a unit from getting <laughs> shot, or you'd protect a key character, yeah. um, especially early in the game when you didn't have many screens. Now mm -hmm. you're using it to pick up real primary points. That's right. This, uh, this ability to pop up close by used to be for shooting. Mm -hmm. um, that's fine. You could have come up and shot with something and tried to steal the objective. Sure. In this case, we needed OPSEC. Yeah. So we needed a unit that doesn't necessarily shoot that well, and, and it's fine to trade. You know, cheaper a lot of the time. This could that's this right. could be 10 more Brood Brothers, right? Um, so that's, that's all really, really exciting. That's right. Um, so hopefully this is helpful. Uh, definitely be looking about how you can apply these in your games uh, playing Gene Steel Occult. Uh, so with that having been said, let's go ahead and uh, talk about some lists. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple list ideas. Yeah. Um, and before we dive into the specifics, I want to talk about some units and their new uses, um, especially after the, the points uh, increases. They are increases. Yeah, they're, well, every army got points increased uh, across the board. Yeah. Some of the Previously, key units like Aberrants mm -hmm. definitely saw more of a points hike than they deserved. I'd yeah, say that I'd would say probably so, be about sure. right. So yeah, Aberrants definitely continued to take a hit, so I've kind of started backing away from them very, very slowly. Um, but other things, so the Ridge Runners did not take any points increases, oh, essentially. And the Ridge Runners got a lot oh, better. They might have gone by five points, right? But like, not enough. Got so much better. They got the treatment they deserved on, on the, uh, the rules, rules side, and they're also dirt cheap. Like, I think they're criminally undercosted, which is great. Um, so they're fantastic. The Jackals, of course, were 10 points. They went up to 14 points, which is generally speaking, um, this is before weapons, of course, you have to adjust that. Um, a bit higher than the other things, right? This is still like a 40% increase on their base hole. But let's be honest, 10 points for a two moon model minus one to hit that could get invulns and move fast was really, yeah, really cheap. Yeah, and it plays the mission better than ever. So exactly. they're still a great pick. They're still great. You I can't would, probably bring yeah. as many as you could. Before. Not as many as you could. I, what I ended up doing is I dropped a few, but I would still honestly look at them as a way to take um, engage on all fronts secondary. They're just very, very flexible. Um, so I still love them. I just want to kind of put a shout out to that. Um, that's kind of the main thing that I almost always consider, right? And all the vehicles got more interesting. All the vehicles got more interesting, their points are reasonable, transports are good, um, and just reiterating this idea of counter-charge melee units, right? right. Having the, these units of acolytes that will die once they reach, that's not their job. Their job is to stay out of, out of range, out of line of sight, advance and charge up, kill whatever is, is coming into your tra uh, transports, and do that. So, anyways, just wanted to kind of put that out there, because these are some general things that I'm thinking about when I'm building my lists. And this, this army, between the two codexes it can pull from, oh has gosh. an unbelievably huge number of builds. Yep. So we couldn't even begin to touch on how many viable armies there are for this. We're just pulling out two that we think have some personality and can play the game well. Totally. So the first one I want to talk about is a Brigade, which I'm really excited. Um, I'm running Bladed Cog. Bladed Cog still, to me, seems like the forerunner coming into 9th edition yeah. out of the end of 8th. Uh, you get that ad added durability both from the Invulnerable save and their new spell from Psychic Awakening for the 5-up Feel No Pain. Um, combine that with things like ignoring penalties for mining lasers. They're just, like, really good. Real they're good. great. Great faction. Um, and, of course, of course, great Warlord traits. Now, so the Brigade is them, crucial, right? Because you needed is. the HQ slots and just the slots in general. I really I really did. I um, We talked about how important 
important the HQs were before, and that was one of the main, re main reasons to see, can I actually get a brigade? So this actually let, let, let me into uh, looking more at the Rock Grinders, the heavy support option, and realizing they're actually quite saucy. I like them, they're, they're reasonable points, they have the mining lasers, um, and so this was sort of the thing that unlocks this uh, detachment for me. Yeah. Um, so what we're looking at is we're looking at the classics, right? Patriarch, Icon Ward, Jackal Alphas, because there's a good amount of shooting. We're looking at the Magus, um, and if, uh, I feel like I'm miss missing one. Oh yeah, the Icon, oh, we have the Icon Ward. So basically the, the core, the classics of the characters, right? Icon Ward, absolutely crucial to get that six up feeling of pain on the majority of the army. Definitely would consider trying to get a second one, um, but again, we're really, really tight on those points. Yeah, you can't be as frivolous with character HQ slots in 9th edition at all. No, you really um, can't. Even with the brigade. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so then what I'm looking at is I'm looking at a couple Acolyte squads. Um, again, keeping them within the 10 range, but we're looking at putting about about three saws in each of those. Um, so they're all icons, still very he heavy hitting. They're squads. very heavy hitting. They're just, they have a little bit less chaff, which again is better than taking full blast, things like that. Yeah. Um, uh, a min couple of min squads of acolytes potentially with their ability to go into these heavy transports. Remember the, the uh, heavy support uh, Goliath Rock Grinder only takes six, uh, six bodies. Yeah. So just having those in there is really nice. Um, they still have rending claws and all that. Um, then we're looking at some Brood Brothers because Chimeras are awesome, yes. uh, and they are actually in the actual codex, so That's we can right. take them. That's right, so you can take them within your main detachment, you don't really have to nice. break it. Chimeras are excellent great. Uh, with Brood Brothers. Uh, it's kind of an obvious choice, a perfect way to hold, hold objectives. They really are. I ended up running them as cheap as possible because this list does run pretty tight, but honestly, Double Heavy Flamers is kind of, kind of interesting on them. Totally interesting. Um, so that's something to definitely consider. So, so that's it with the troops. Um, a, a couple other neophyte squads, some, just some 10-mans running around there um, with a couple mining lasers just randomly. Tr I used to run uh, up to 14 in them, a couple mining lasers, but really we're stripping everything down yeah. to the essentials, right? Of course. That's really what we're looking and at. And MSU is the way to go here. Exactly. You don't care about giving up kills. Right. Um, as far as elite slot, we're still talking about Killamorph, Sanctus, um, Nexos, of course, for command points, yeah. because ultimately we did lose one. We're That's actually right. down, down to 17 plus the D3. And you're um, getting less CP early in the game. So yeah. even though you're only down one from where you were before, you're actually down CP early in the game because you have to wait till later in the game to get them all. That's it's right. unfortunate about the Nexus. He used to always sit in the way back of the board <laughs> and just kind of be safe. He can't right. do that anymore. No, it's pretty. So it's it's a, lot, a lot more tricky for him. It's pretty scary. Yeah. So it's funny because I actually t I took the brigade not only for the HQs but also, funny enough, for the fast attack. Yeah. Uh, this is one of the best slots in the game going into nine edition, in my opinion. I of course have three units of jackals. I have two that are uh, min squads, just four bikes. I have one that is ten. Because let's be honest, if you put the five up feeling pain on them, they have an invuln, they're minus one to hit. That is a unit that actually can hold objectives yeah. and actually stay on People the board. People don't even want to shoot at it. When no. It's got, when, with it's the like, minus one to hit and oh the, the feel no pain, it's like not even worth it's it. It's super cool. Yeah. Um, so I've got that. I, of course, have the uh, Ridge Runners, which I run as one unit to save on the slots. Again, becomes finally you could, relevant. You could easily go for Max Ridge Runners uh, one of these <laughs> oh, days if man. you want to. But... Uh, he's trying to be nice to his opponents here. I'm trying to and show only taking a diversity. Up I'm just excited to put some of these models on the board, including um, Scout Sentinels. They don't give up kills anymore. They can block. They can get up early. They move and shoot. They move and shoot, and they're super cheap. They're like they're and dirt they'll cheap. grab you points early in the game. Exactly. It's fantastic. So tons of fast attack slots. Again, the three heavy support uh, slots, the Rock Grinders. So that was a whole lot of word soup I put out there. But the basic idea is um, lots of bodies, MSU, a couple of hard hitting units, the classic characters. Mining lasers. Yeah, spread yeah. out threats. I think it's great. <laughs> you're playing in the shooting phase. You're playing in the psychic. You've got lots of fight. You got lots of movement. That's right. This is a ninth edition army. It's. I'm really excited to yeah. play some more with it. It's really cool. Uh, okay, so the second list is something I'm very enthusiastic <laughs> That's about right. um, because I I love the way these vehicles have improved mm -hmm. and I love the way that the Brood Brothers yeah. have improved. So this army is 50/50 Brood Brothers and uh, pure Gene Stealers, great. basically Gene Stealer cults. And what we're doing here is we're taking a battalion of each, mm -hmm. and the battalion for the Brood Brothers is crucial because we want the three tank commanders. Yes. They're fantastic. They're, um, they're absolutely uh, amazing. And really. this is something that you could always take the regular tank, uh, regular Lehman Rust with um, the actual detachment, but really you want to unlock those tank commanders for the, the real money. The tank commander is excellent. The weapon choice is really going to be more something you need to play out. The battle yeah. cannons are still fantastic, but... You, you might have seen in some of our, our play tests that they can get, still get tagged. <laughs> yep. Punisher Gatling is excellent. I think I'd go with the Battle Cannons just because you have a lot of screens already and you, you do need to that. bring the tank hunting. Yeah. You'd also fill out the rest of this battalion with three Chimeras and uh, Brood Brothers. Yep, totally. Um, that was just to fill that detachment out. Yep. Um, and you additionally would bring some of the indirect with a, a Wyvern and a Basilisk, Basilisk yeah. because they're fantastic. You'd always upgrade them so uh, if great. you needed to. 
fantastic troops. Now, <laughs> on the other side, what have we done with the Jane Steelers? So what we've done is we've said, okay, we already have a lot of really scary tanks, tanks that are going to be up in their face. So this actually lets us double down on that, right? So we're still looking, in this case, we're not taking the heavy support uh, Goliaths, we're taking the transport ones. That's right. We're going to be filling them up with Acolytes, taking as many saws as we can fit in a 10-man squad, Cult Icon. So this gives us our melee threat, right? We have tons of Daka from our, our good brood brother friends. We're going to bring uh, this so we have these melee threats that are also not so that's such easy eggs to crack in the yeah, first place, right? that's right. And with so many vehicles on the table, right? We've already talked about three Goliaths, yep. three Chimeras, three tank commanders, two uh, artillery pieces. That's right. This is 11 tanks <laughs> on the board uh, already, and they just can't afford to get through all of that yeah. armor. And the juicy acolytes that are inside these Goliaths, they are they hit really hard. They really and the guard do. normally do not have, like the Brood Brothers do not have that combat threat. Yeah. This really fills that major gap that they had. It's actually a really cool balance. 100%. Um, as far as HQs, of course, we're running the Patriarch. We'll take the Magus because we really want that utility from the spells. Um, and then the other slot is kind of a flex slot, slot depending on what you're trying to run, right? Um, we don't actually have the um, Jackal Alphas because we're not... All of our shooting, we're kind of moving to the Brood Brothers detachment, right. so we don't really need that role anymore. Um, but there's definitely some other interesting options you can fill out with that last slot. Uh, you could do Bladed Cog, I love them, but things like Four Armed Ever becomes interesting if you want to be able to vec things, and you don't need to be quite as durable because you're, you're playing the game a bit differently. Yeah. So I think this is a really fun list that really yeah. plays into the fact that, hey, move and shoot is much, much more uh, lenient for vehicles. Let's play these other units that um, are interesting. You will, of course, lose three command points for this, but the benefits that you gain are definitely worth it to be. I think so. To the be shooting that you gain is great. Oh the, gosh, yeah, it's amazing. Now, of course, you could always um, build more of this army. Like you could build a similar style army mm -hmm. as a pure by going like heavy into ridge runners. Like yeah. you could have max ridge runners. Oh, totally. Right. Yeah. Um, and nobody, like, Max Ridge Runner is a good idea. It's just a mean idea. <laughs> it's so mean. Um, but it's really strong. And you could still take Lehman Russ, right? Mm -hmm. You could take this as a pure detachment. Yeah. I think there might be something in there, too, where you kind of trade out some of the guard vehicles and go all in on your, your cult vehicles. Mining lasers were one of the big winners from the points changes because they, they're they still well-priced, they're still cheap. Um, so any unit that can take mining lasers is still really interesting, yeah. honestly. Well, we're gonna have an army that's just like one of these yeah. on the table very soon with a really exciting battle report that you're not gonna wanna miss. And of course, check out all of the other great tactics videos and faction focuses that we've done uh, leading up to the launch of 9th edition. We're gonna continue to have one <laughs> almost every day and we're gonna do more beyond. So there's a lot to look forward to. Um, as we said, this is a ridiculously deep codex. One of the reasons we put it towards the end of our release leading up to uh, ninth edition is because it takes so much playtesting and we've only scratched the surface compared to what is absolutely possible in That's the right. new edition. So if you guys have builds that you've been trying out or that you've been theory crafting, definitely let us know um, in the comments on the YouTube channel um, or also on Facebook. That's where we have a lot of engagement with our community. So definitely stop by, say hi. Uh, and if you haven't already, do like and subscribe. We are gonna be continuing to put out this ridiculous amount of content. Absolutely. Uh, we're having a great time. We can't wait to see you guys on the tabletop.